It's Saturday night and we're back in the Gunners Club. And wherever you are in the world and whenever you are in the world, you're here with us and you're very welcome. Now, as a child, the number one soft drink for kids growing up at the Milk Bar? Fanta. Fanta. Passiona. Yeah. <laughs> for us it was Solo. Now, Solo is a lemon squash that's had a really strong hold on the Australian market. So much so, it's pretty much rocked every multinational that's come to Australia. Mellow Yellow came and went. They tried to replace it in the market. Mountain, did. Mountain Dew tried it. Yep, Lyft tried it as well yep. and has recently capitulated and decided, OK, we'll simply market our citrus flavour here uh, under the Sprite name instead. The reason for that is because of this product here, Solo. And some say it's simply because of the name. It's such a strong, bold name, Solo. Do it by yourself. Go your own way. It's also the most lemony of the lemon drinks, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. And the whole idea of Solo was it was lightly carbonated so you could slam it down fast. And you remember the pictures of the men with the kayaks and yeah. they were out there and, and being real men. And, and, real and they men. were slamming and it was pouring all over yeah. them and the girls loved that, 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 uh, those ads. I remember well, that. I loved the product too. Now recently there's been a bit of a stir in the Australian market. Asahi, the big Japanese conglomerate who mm -hmm. owns Foster's, have recently released this onto the market and it's really just appeared. Have a look at that. It's called Hard Solo. You want to take out a can and have a squeeze. Uh, I'm sorry, Hard Solo. Hard Solo. Hard Solo. Now have a look what they've done. They've taken, Alcoholic, what? Yeah, they've taken the exact same branding, the same name Solo. They've taken the yellow and the black colours and in fact they've inverted it around so they've kept a lot of the descriptive four and a half for percent that. yeah wow now there's no secret that alcohol is a drug it depresses your neurological system uh, and every single country on earth tries to regulate it i don't mind being depressed yeah. <laughs> okay but here's ah. the thing at what stage should the government start to intervene and at what stage should they actually stop? So, for example, in America, the legal drinking age is? Tw uh, 21, I believe. Yeah, 21. Here in Australia? 18. 18. In Germany, it's uh, even different. 18, you can get onto the hard stuff. 16, you can uh, consume beer, wine, champagne. Really? Or 14 years of age, you can do the same. If you're with a custodial adult. At 14? At 14. Where's my passport? <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think they probably won't ask you for ID if you're going to the pub now. <laughs> now, the system for regulating advertising of alcohol is it's pretty much a self-regulated system in Australia. You might have your own thoughts as to how self-regulation works, if it actually effectively controls behaviour or just controls the appearance of behaviour. But the way that uh, the regulation works in Australia is that it's funded by the alcohol industry and they internally monitor it. Uh, it's assisted by the Australian government. It's a not-for-profit organisation. Now this has come under fire because a number of reasons. We've talked about it sharing the same name, it's sharing the same colours although being inverted. Now I must say if you want to buy this product, you have to be 18 years of age. Mm. You can't be a child and buy it. You can't buy it at a milk bar or a 7-Eleven in Australia. Uh, it's sold only where alcoholic products yeah. are sold. Um, Asahi's gone out of the way to say that they are not marketing this product on Facebook or social media. media. And they've gone out of the way to show that it's alcoholic, even calling the product name Alcoholic Lemon and putting the 18 plus symbol there and also defining the alcoholic volume of 4.5 percent and there's the pregnancy warning as well if you're pregnant not to drink because consume it consume alcohol consume. yeah and it shows the um the estimated number of drinks that's 1.3 now here's the thing under the standards of advertising they can't market it for something which is appealing towards minors but they are using a brand which is recognized by minors now It'd be perfectly okay to market uh, Spanish wine, let's say, with the picture of a horse running through a field. 
And it just so happens that a child might also find that attractive because it's a beautifully drawn horse. Hmm. No problem. The moment that you start to stick a unicorn on that horse uh, and it's got a yeah. smile, then suddenly you're breaking the code. And actually, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So it's the alcohol beverages advertising code. And have a look at their under section two responsibility towards minors, where under their own code, they will not create confusion with confectionery, soft drinks, that's what we call soda pop in Australia, mm. or other similar products such that marketing is likely to appeal strongly to minors. Now, I must say, I think they have got around that in my eyes because quite frankly, they've gone to every single um, effort that they can to show that this is an adult product and the product is for adults. Where do you stand on that? It's a free market. Mm -hmm. It clearly states not to be sold to people under 18. If anyone sells it to people under 18, then they should come under the full force of the law. Apart from that, I don't care if you've got a, a, a picture of a unicorn or Barbie on it, for yeah. that matter. They still can't buy it. Yeah, I mean, having a picture of, of something to appeal to children would certainly um, mean that it wouldn't fall under that code. But let me tell you this, in 2008, the then Labor government slapped a 70% tax on what we in Australia call alcohol pops. Yeah. And most uh, girls between the ages of 12 and 17, I know it's illegal, but most girls in Australia between 12 to 17 years of age who have consumed alcohol, it's the alco pops that they've tried. Now you and I... The, the, yes, I know those, those fizzy drinks, but yeah. Okay, yeah, I know which ones you mean. Yeah, well, look, I was in a shop today where the I The breezes this. and, the, and yeah. the such like, yeah, but with they, the passion fruit and the raspberry flavoured and all of those, yep, yep. They actually had cans for sale uh, called something like Lemonade uh, Popsicle. Now, that to me really harkens back to childhood when you start to put names like uh, Lemonade Popsicle on a drink. But there it was, you had to be 18 years of age to purchase a product. But for me, that's sort of starting to blur the line. Oh, look, understand under understandably, if you've got an older brother, sister or mate, and they're, oh, can you pop in there for me and, and grab mm. me a couple of bottles? I'm, go I'm going to a 16th birthday party. Yeah. At the end of the day, they're breaking the law. So they should be prosecuted as such. But why give the adults a hard time? It's a market-driven economy. Let me um, answer that a step further. You and I are big fans of Choice Magazine in Australia. Yes. I subscribe yes. to it. Choice Magazine basically is a not-for-profit consumer advocacy group, mm. and they publish magazines. Uh, I subscribe online, so I don't get the old-fashioned magazines that used to hand to your aunt. Yeah. But whenever I purchase something, because I like to have a relationship with what I buy and keep it for a long time, yep. I always check Choice Magazine. Uh, and they did a test themselves with people of legal drinking age, but young people. Um, and they let them try alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks. Almost a quarter of the people who tried the alcoholic soft drinks did not realise that there was actually alcohol in that drink. So what it does, it masks the taste of alcohol. Uh, it's said that people do not have a natural predisposition to like the taste of alcohol. It's something which you actually have to develop, you have to cultivate that taste because, let's face it, it's naturally a poison. And when we first, as humans, drank it, it was disguised by honey or something like that. You had yeah. a natural fermentation yep. Yep. occur. <clears throat> so people talk about it being a bridging uh, sort of way to get people to drink harder alcohol. It's been recognised that if you can stave off the age at which someone is introduced to alcohol, that it will affect their habits of drinking alcohol for the better. It means that they're less likely to abuse it. Uh, they're less likely to consume it as often. So... I'm fully for something which keeps children off drinking alcohol. I can see in my mind that this adheres to the code, the self-regulatory code. The issue I have that would keep me awake at night is to whether I would actually still use that same brand name. That keeps you awake at night, does it? <laughs> if I was producing it. But what I'd like you to do is to try it against the regular solid. When I say regular, non-alcoholic, I know this is a non-sugar one that I picked up at the supermarket for a dollar because I wanted to bring one in, show you the colours of it. Oh, I reckon that's even more lemony without the sugar. Okay. It's always very tart. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what's so appealing about it. It's real lemony. Mm -hmm. It's not a lemon-flavoured, super sugary thing like most of them are. Yeah. 
that's still a really good drink. I've always, always liked solar. All right, so on to the alcoholic one, 4.5% alcohol. You're not partaking? I know, I, I want your opinion. All right, instantly I can smell the alcohol in that. You can? Yes. Mm -hmm. The other one was straight lemon. This one you can... Yeah, I can as well. Straight away I can smell the alcohol in that. Now, I will actually try it. It's not as lemony or as tart as the non-alcohol one. Mm. It's still lemony. It's actually very pleasant. I'm going to say this, though. If it's you're, not as fizzy. If you're drinking this by itself, the alcohol is very well disguised. This is definitely something you take to a party. You take, you know, a four-pack like that without any issue. I mean, there is a multitude of pre-mixed cans of different... Without end. Yeah. After having tried this, and if I were so inclined... I'd be reaching for this quite, quite, yeah. quite happily I, in, uh, at, at the liquor store. No I, think, I think it's a satisfying thing. I think that they've limboed around the code. Uh, I, if I was the manufacturer of this, I would lose the branding name. What's, um, what's the price on a four-pack? Uh, I think it was close to $18. So five bucks a can. Okay. Mm. Close, yeah, five bucks a can. Yeah. That's pretty average to all the others as well. Yeah, that's right. Your breezes and your all the... Different varieties. They, they no, normally the other ones, they generally come in the three thirty mil bottles. This one's coming in the proper size can. Yeah, again, that's probably a problem. You go to the convenience store, and the cans, to all intents and purposes, are the same shape, the same wide-mouthed pour on the can, which they're famous for. Yep. You know, rip it open and slam it down fast, which Solo's famous for. And so that's really my thoughts on it. This actually can slam down faster because it's not, not nowhere near as fizzy as the original non-alcoholic one from what I'm getting here. Love to know your thoughts and how it stands where you live. Does America have something similar, a code that they abide by? And how do people limbo around that? That's not bad. I'd go, I'd go for that. I definitely would. Let us know what you think. We'll see you soon. You guys have a good one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya.